Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Deep Water. What a beautiful day it's been back in the great state of Texas here. We hope the Lord has blessed you wherever you are tonight. Whatever you're doing, God is with us. God is with us, and he loves us each and every one. Uh, as we pray tonight, you're always welcome. You're always welcome to uh, message us, not message us, send us a message and uh, tell us your prayer needs and we will certainly uh, pray for them. But tonight we want to pray for David and Cindy Audette. Uh They have so many health issues, that, but God is a healer. God is a healing God, and we, we ask him to deliver both of them tonight. Uh, Sister Myrtle, uh, Myrtle Eki, we just, bless her heart, 92, but she has some rough days, and we need to continue to bless her and ask the Lord's favor to be about her. Miss Glenda Moore, recovering from her stroke. We still want complete recovery, 100%. And talked to a young lady last night on the phone. Happy birthday, Miss Pat. We love you. We think the world of you. Uh, Pat needs, you, here's a prayer you don't pray very often. Pat, Pat needs to gain some weight. <laughs> you don't pray that prayer very often. I mean, how many people have ever come to you and like, pray that I gain weight? Well, Pat didn't ask for prayer, but I'm asking for prayer for her because uh, she her sickness is taking more more calories to breathe than she's taking in to keep her body alive. So we need her to gain weight and be be made strong. And as always, her faith is is just keeps growing and growing, and God keeps blessing her with life and. And we've, we've, she's been our friend uh, for 25 years. So Pat, we love you tonight and we're gonna pray for you. So let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get to anything else. Father, we thank you and we do praise you tonight for all things in this life. You've blessed us with health. And even at times you've blessed us with injury that leads us to be made closer to you drawing closer to you because of our sickness or because of our injury, because that we know that sometimes it's only you that can fix it or make it better. We do pray for Miss Pat tonight that you would strengthen her body, heal her lungs, give her strength, put some weight back on her, help her, Lord Jesus, to be strong in you, as she is faithful to serve you in all that she does. We pray for Miss Glenda Moore. We ask that you would touch her and give her complete healing from her stroke, complete deliverance and victory, overcoming power that she needs to be fine through rehabilitation or through your grace and your glory, just instantaneously touching her tonight and making her whole. We pray for David and Cindy Odette. They have so many things going on in their lives, but Lord, we believe that you are our healer. You are the one who is able to deliver us and make us completely well of whatever sickness comes upon us. And we ask you to bless both of them tonight and heal them from their disease, from their sicknesses. And for Miss Myrtle, we ask you, Lord, to bless her, give her a sound mind. Help her be strong as, help her be as strong physically as she is spiritually. And that's mighty strong. We ask you, Lord, to bless her with good days. And let the victory of Jesus surround her and let her know that she's loved and cared for in all things. Bless her family. Continue to give them strength as they go through this ordeal with her. And Lord, we got a couple of people in, in Lebanon, Missouri, who just need strength, need health, need healing, need deliverance from the debilitating sicknesses that have them down, have them where they cannot go out anymore or uh, 
Their, their outings are very short. We pray that you would make them strong, that you would make them well, whole, and able to do the things that they would they need to do. We love them. They are part of the Deepwater family. And we ask you to send your blessings to be about them and let them just let them know that the prayers of the of the of the church of the faithful still brings great favor from you. We love you tonight, Lord, and we ask you to help us in all things. Heal us, be with Miss Lois Warneman tonight as she still battles some of the things that, that she faces. She had to put off one procedure, but it, it's coming and we'll get to it. And we ask you to just help us all be strong in you to draw closer to you and trust you in all things. We love you and we thank you tonight. In Jesus' name we ask, and we all said amen. <clears throat> amen. Hey, for the next couple of weeks, we're, it's just a very short, very short discussion of, of Joshua. Joshua wasn't a prophet. He's a man who inherited the mantle of leadership that he didn't seek, but he didn't shirk his duties either. He was strong, he was faithful, he was dedicated, he was dutiful in everything that he did. He may, he, he, we're, we're going to blow through the book in, in about three times, but we're going to start all the way back in the very first chapter when he takes over the leadership of Israel. He, all of a sudden, he goes from being Josh, or excuse me, Moses' right hand man to being the leader of about 3 million people. All of a sudden, he's in charge. He had been groomed for this. He'd been set for this. Everything had been working for this. But there's a difference between being groomed for it, going to school for it, and then actually having to put it in to practice. You all understand what I'm talking about. You go to school all the time, but when you have to put it into practice, it becomes real. It becomes real, and it gets real in a hurry for Joshua right here in the very first chapter. Read this with me. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the, to the children of Israel. Every, no, no, this is important right here. When I tell you that, you, I want you to pay special attention to it. When I tell you something's important in the Bible, I'm not just telling you that this is more important than something else, but the emphasis here is on this, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, that's the Mediterranean, toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Here's the, here's, here's the killer verse to the whole thing. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Be strong and of good courage. Uh, I was repeating. Let me read verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. That's two times he said it. That you may observe to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. 
Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Three times, right here. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord is, is for the Lord your God is with you wherever. Everybody say wherever. Wherever you go. I love that. I love that. No man's going to be able to stand against you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. But you have to be strong and very courageous. Very courageous. If we, allow, if we are allowed by God to awaken to face a new day, we are to awaken with a plan, uh, with the plan of God for us to go forth conquering our own personal promised land. This is the land the Lord has given us. And it is in this land, this, this, wherever you are, whatever country you're watching this, this from to right now is your land to go forth and conquer. I'm not telling you to pick up arms. I'm not telling you to pick up a sword. I'm telling you to pick up the name of Jesus and walk boldly into the into the den of lions, into facing the valleys of the giants, into the habitations of dragons, wherever you have to go, wherever God puts you, be strong, be very courageous, go forth and conquer in the name of Jesus. What I'm talking about is that God wants us, everybody say it, all to go forward. Not just some of us, not just a few of us, but all of us forward into his blessings, forward into his promises, forward into our destiny in him. God wants us all, understand this now, to go forward into the best life we can possibly have. So it begs the question, how? How? Well, thank you for asking. I'm going to give you the answer. First thing you have to have is a vision of the victory God wants you to have. Get a vision of the victory God wants for you. Now, the Lord gave Joshua a vision of great victory. In the first four verses, that's what he's talking about. Moses is dead. You're in charge. There's the land before you. All of it, you're going to give, you're even going to be divvying it up between all the tribes of Israel. It's right there. He said, after the death of Moses, uh, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, you might as well say, you arise, go over the Jordan, you and all the people to the land which I'm giving to them, which I am giving to them, which I am, meaning it will come to pass which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. So wherever you put a foot down is yours. Every place you move is yours. If you don't want it, don't walk. Because every time you take a step, it's your ground. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far to the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Hittites to the Mediterranean Sea to the going down of the sun, it's all yours. It's all yours. Now, Moses had, had faithfully served the Lord for over 40 years. I realize that he died when he was 120. But for 40 years, the last 40 years of his life, he had faithfully followed God. From the leading of Israel out of Egypt all the way to the time of his death. He had put up with everything in the world, but he has faithfully led. But, and people, 
Some griped, some complained, but they all followed him. But now he's dead. He's gone. And it's time for a brand new generation to rise up and start winning their own victories that God has specifically for them. Now is the time, even for us, God's children, to get a new vision of the victory God wants for us, for us, for you, me, all of us. And it's time to commit ourselves to win those victories. We don't get these victories just by standing around and looking pretty like we normally do. We're all good looking, right? Say amen. Amen. There you go. Anybody didn't say amen to that? Well, something wrong with you. But it's a challenge. This challenge is for all those, even up until today, for all those who serve the Lord. Now, Joshua, right now, as we're reading this, was about 60 years old when God called him to rise up and go into this new land. <clears throat> Every day, God would offer him new victories, new blessings, and they were all in store for him. All he had to do was start walking. God has these same victories, these same new blessings in store for us because every place the sole of our foot shall tread shall be ours. Each of us needs to dedicate ourselves to winning the spiritual victories that God has for us. We're not talking about conquering nations with swords, with, with rifles, with guns, with bombs. We're not even talking about doing it with politics. We're talking about doing it with hearts dedicated unto the Lord. We're talking about souls that are dedicated to serving the Lord Jesus who gave us his life that we might be able to enter in the kingdom of heaven and live there forever and forever and forever. But most of all, have our sins forgiven that we might live the eternal life that God has promised us. But every day, God gives us new opportunities, opportunities to make a difference in other people's lives, opportunities for new victories in us. But you have to get a vision for the victory that God has specifically for you. You may not be of national prominence. You may not be of international prominence. But you have your own sphere of influence. Your friends, your family, the people you work with, they see you. You are a living testimony. You are a sermon that is walked, that is walk, a walking sermon out in front of them, living in front of them. They, people would way rather see a sermon as they would hear one. So everywhere, every place the sole of your foot shall tread, is yours because God has given it to you and other people are watching to see how you prosper or take care of the land God has given to you. Without a clear vision, chances are you will come to the end of your life and wonder what you could have done and even more than that, what you should have done. And like so many, you may wonder if life, your life really mattered at all. But when we catch God's vision, the vision of his blessings, of his anointing, of his power, of his presence, of his, his being with us every, everywhere we go. You will cause, at, 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 at the end of your days, you will say, just like the Apostle Paul, if you have caught that vision and you know what God wants you to do, which is being that living sermon, that living epistle, that living letter that's showing the world about Jesus. You can finish your life as the Apostle Paul. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept, you do it, the faith. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. This spiritual vision gives significance to an otherwise meaningless details on our lives. It is not always about what we are doing, but rather why, or yeah, why we're doing it. And why do we do it? We do it for Jesus. 
God wants us to help people get connected with Jesus. That is our job. People think, well, I've got a Christian duty. I need to find out what it is. I can tell you right here. I'm telling you. All right. Everybody just pull back a minute. I'm going to tell you and explain life in just a few short words. Your job, your Christian job, is to get people to Jesus. I just told you. Well, I need to study the Word of God. Yes, you do. You don't need to study to find out what your what your vision is, what your mission is, because I just told you. Well, I don't know if you're right or not. Trust me, I'm right. Because we have one job. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of all creatures. He wasn't talking about dogs and cats and everything else. He's talking about every kind of woolly, furry, bald-headed, pot-bellied, mouth-breather person we can find. And their husbands. No comment. No comment. <laughs> that ought to draw some comments on the on the sidebar there. Anyway, God has all kinds of victories planned for us, and you can have those victories if you will catch the vision that God has planned for your life. And you need to take courage and God promise to be with us wherever we go. Yes, there are many opportunities out there for us, but there's that word again, but when you set yourself up to follow God's plan for your life, there will also be challenges and a great deal of opposition. Verse 4 reminds us that Israel is going into the land of the Hittites. In other words, enemy territory. It would take a great deal of amount of courage for Joshua to go forward. That is why the Lord told Joshua, Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Then verse 7, that was verse 6, verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from, the, from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. And in verse 9, of course, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It takes courage to be a Christian. It takes courage. Moving forward for God is not easy. No one ever said, God never even said it was going to be easy. If it was easy, anybody could do it. When Israel crossed the Jordan River, it was an immediate declaration of war to the Hittites. And it would be a fight to the finish. Israel, the promised land was there. It was given to them by God. But God wasn't just going to hand it to them. They had to go in and take the keys away from those that already occupied the land. The land was everything God said it was going to be. It was a land that flowed with milk and honey. It was a land of blessings, a land of opportunity, a land of hope, a land of joy, but they had to go take it. They had to go conquer it. There were powerful enemies ready to keep them from taking the land everywhere they turned. And they did not conquer all their enemies in just one day. In fact, it took them over 14 years before they really settled down and kind of had some semblance of peace. But remember this, even though Canaan was, a, was the promised land, it was occupied territory. The land God has given to us is occupied territory. The enemy is entrenched and he's powerful. The church, we serve an awesome and very powerful God who will always, always, I said always, lead us to victory over our enemies. 
being, being a Christian is not only blessing the church, it's also a battle. And that's what too many preachers fail to tell everybody anymore. Oh, you'll just be so blessed serving the Lord, and you will be. But the minute you sign up to be in God's army, you are in a battle. You are in a war. And it's a war fought in two different levels, spiritual and physical. The body has to obey the spirit, and the spirit has to live in the realm of God, believing God for all things. Uh, if you want victory in your Christian life, you got to fight for it. Always going forward for Jesus. Always taking ground away from the enemy. We are told, James tells us, give no, give no room to the enemy. Give no place to the devil. Give him, don't give him an inch. Don't, in other words, don't back up. Even when things look rough, even when things look hard, even when times are tough in your life, even when there's too much month at the end of the money, go forward trusting God. It takes courage to be a Christian, moving forward for God, doing what God tells you to do, especially when it seems as if everyone else is living for the devil. God, I'm the only one. Elijah tried to pull that trick. God, they've killed everybody else. I'm the only one. God said, no, you're not. Got 7,000 stashed over here that's never bowed a knee to an idol. They're ready to go. You need to get out of that cave. I got work for you to do, son. You got kings to anoint. You got lands to change. You got things to do, but you can't do it from inside that cave. You have to take a step of courage and go forward. You need to take courage right here. We can all take courage from God's promises. God told Joshua, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That promise is just as good today as it was the day it was given to Joshua. Take courage in God's presence. In verse 5, the Lord told Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. Through Moses, God delivered a nation. Through Joshua, God brought the, his people into the promised land. And there's no telling what God can do through you. I'm no one. I'm, I'm so insignificant. I don't even know if God recognizes me. Moses was a baby cast adrift in a river on a whim of his mother to try to keep him alive. He was raised in the enemy's house, learned the ways of the Egyptians and Pharaoh, finally kicked out of the land as a murderer, wandered 40 years, found, found a wife and a herd of goats. And 40 years after, during that 40 years, he also found a burning bush in the presence of God. And what God do he said, go back to Egypt, lead my people out. There he found Joshua, took him under his wing, said, I need help. Let's go. Let's go. You got to take courage in God's presence. As I will be, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I'll not leave you nor forsake you. The future is just as bright as you want it to be. God is telling you that every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, he has already given us. And God has promised that he will be with us through it all. No matter where we go, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how, the, how bad the storm clouds come hovering in over us, God's going to be with us. But you know, it's going to take something on our part to really make this work. And it's, it's so simplistic that so many Christians miss it. We have to saturate ourselves with the word of God. That's one of the first things we have to do. We have to learn the Word of God, read the Word of God. No, 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 I said that wrong. We don't just read it. We have to saturate ourselves with it. Let it permeate our souls. If you really want to go forward, we have to saturate our lives with the Word of God. We have to saturate our souls, permeate, letting the, the Spirit of God permeate all the way through the skin to where it gets all the way into the deepest part of our heart. As the Lord told Joshua in verse 8, the book of the law, we would say the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth, 
but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to some of it, according to part of it. No, what's the word? All that is written in it. For then, and only then, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. I didn't say it. God said it. God wants you to be fully committed to not only learn his word, we are also to be living his word. And you can't live his word unless you know his word. If you want to go forward, you must saturate your life with the word of God. God also said, meditate on this word day and night or be dedicated to this word, his word day and night. No matter what we're doing, the word of God ought to be going through our minds, ought to be, ought, ought to be with us. Now I'm saying, you have, do you have to wear a pair of earphones or have wires coming out of your ears or something like that and listen to only Bible tapes and things like that? Nope. But when was the last time you read your Bible? When was the last time you shut off the TV and read for 30 minutes or 15 minutes, 10 minutes? When was the last time you just took the time to pray through the commercials? That'll give you 15 minutes an hour. Think about that. If you just read the Bible through the commercials of whatever TV you're watching, whatever TV, if it's an hour show, you probably, you're probably about 10 to 12 minutes that you'll get in Bible reading right there. All you got to do is just read through the commercials. You don't watch the commercials anyway. No, you're flipping channels to see what else is on and going right back to that same bunch of nonsense that we was watching to start with. I do it. I'm guilty. I'm, so I'm not picking on anybody. I'm doing, I got the same issue in my life. But God promises good success if we'll meditate and then act upon his word. There are warnings going along with this in the Bible. In the Bible. Paul said to the Galatians, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Peter said, be sober. That means sound-minded. Doesn't mean put your, put your whiskey down, which you ought to be doing anyway. Be sober. Be steadfast in your mind. Be vigilant. Dedicated. Because your adversary, to God, you might put in there, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Meditate on God's word or God's wisdom for life. Because that's really what God's word is, wisdom for our life's journey. Think about like Matthew chapter 11, where Jesus said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. But mostly you should meditate on the fact that even though Jesus died for our sins, he got up. He not only died for our sins, he got up. He came back. He got up. He said, in three days, I will arise. And he did. He got up. They put him down. He got up. He is alive. And the greatest promise of all, he's coming back together in his own to be with him. How long? Forever. Be like the psalmist. Let God's word be a lamp to your feet and a light unto your path every single day, Psalm 119. I'm going to make you look up the verse because it's the longest psalm in the Bible, longest chapter in the Bible. There's your trivia question answered tonight. And you need to rest in God's assurance. Rest in God's assurance. To go forward, you must rest not only in God's assurance, but also in God's, let's call it reassurance. The Lord repeated himself when he said, have I not commanded you? Have I not commanded you? Have I already not told you? 
Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord is God, your God is with you wherever you go. That's verse 9. Three times, that was the third time that he told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. It's like saying, hey, did you understand what I told you? Did you get that? Now, some people can't relate to that. I can because I had a mother, bless her soul, that when I was in trouble and trying desperately to get out of trouble, there would be duties, there would be chores, there would be something that she had sent me to do. And she would look at me and say, did you understand what I told you? Yes, ma'am. And in just a second, she would say, did you understand what I told you? Yes, ma'am. Did you really understand what I told you? Yes, ma'am. And why aren't you doing it? Oh, you meant now. Well, duh, God's not telling us to wait and conquer the land next week. He's telling us to go now. He's telling us to get off the couch and go. Go to work tomorrow. Go to work tonight. Whatever you got to do and be the Christian God wants you to be. Let them see you pray at lunch. Let them see you hold someone's hand and, 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 and tell them it's going to be all right. God's in charge. God's got this. Throw an arm around somebody. It's, it, 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 you don't, you don't, so I'm not touchy feely. Everybody's touchy feely. Well, somebody might have COVID or something like that. Put your mask on. Glove up if you have to. Do what you got to do. Take your Perel with you and just squirt it and lice all them down real good. And pray for them. Pray with them. Lead them to the Lord. Three times he said, be strong. God said, be strong and of good courage. Did you get that, Joshua? Did you understand it? Sometimes, church, we are so very slow to catch on to the things of God, but God is so patient to tell us over and over and over things that we need to know. Over and over, God tries to reassure us that if we seek him, trust him, and even wait upon him, we will have good success. Now, you may not be able to go back and undo the damage that you, that you have done in the past. And you may not be able to go back and not experience the hurts that cast a shadow over you even to this day. But you can go forward, and that's really all that matters. Yeah, whatever's behind us, we're leaving behind, and every day it's a little bit farther back there. So why don't we go forward in the Lord, strong and courageous, trusting God to bring us the victory that he has promised us, even to Joshua and to Israel. All the way through the Bible, you'll find this theme that if we, have, if we are strong and courageous in the Lord, we will have good blessings, success, and prosper. We will be overcomers for the cause of Christ. Deep water swimmers know that God has commanded us to be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Why? Because he's with us wherever we go. Remember that church, we have a destiny to fulfill. Every day, every moment, we need to be going forward for the cause of Christ. Take Jesus with you, be led of the Holy Spirit, and even if you go down into the deepest valleys or the deepest part of the ocean, God's going to be with you. And no matter what situation arises, God will give you the answer. God will give you the help you need to make it through it. Deep water swimmers know that because they're already out there in deep water. You come and be with us. We're going deeper even farther next week. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We love you. We cannot we cannot give you enough, acc enough accolades that... that bring you the honor and glory that is actually due to your to your your name but we thank you lord for being with us we thank you for watching over us and helping us we thank you for giving us the strength and the courage 
to go forth each day and knowing that wherever we place the sole of our foot, it is territory gained for the Lord if we are living the life that you want us to live. Let others know simply by looking at us that we are a child of God. Let our actions tell people that person serves God. Father, we thank you for your help, your strength, your guidance, your direction, and give us of your Holy Spirit that we might go forth every day conquering and overcoming every situation that comes our way. We love you tonight, and we thank you. Bless everyone that's come to deep water tonight. Help us all be stronger and better for you, and we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's children said amen. Amen. God bless you all this morning, or this morning. It's not this morning. It's this evening. That's what it is. Sunday morning. That's what I was trying to say. We will be back at 930 for breakfast. You always got to be there for breakfast. There's no telling where we'll be. Uh, we've been, we've been talked to the kangaroos. We've been to the river. We've been to the lake. In all kinds of places. We're still looking for places to go. It's just been hot in Texas. But it may cool down to a calm 95 and we'll get out again. So be with us for the breakfast, the five minute breakfast. And that's at 9.30 at 9.50. Nine, let me think a minute. My clock's off. 10 9 .30. At 10.15. <laughs> At 10.15, the music starts. It'll be there with a, a timer telling you how much longer you got till the sermon comes on at 10.30. At 10.30. So the music comes on at, at 10.15 if you want to listen to that. It's a pretty good singer, too. Last week, they had a great singer. He was, that, that guy was good. And humble. Huh? And humble. Humble. He was humble, too. Probably the most humble person you'll ever meet. Me, probably the most humble. 1030's church service, be with us Sunday morning. And be on the lookout, because you never know when. One of those little five-minute, what do you call them? Short dive. Short dive is going to jump up and just be there to give you a five-minute encouragement through the rough part of some day. Always be on the outlook, because they're coming. God bless you all. Thank you for being here tonight. We'll see you Sunday morning, if not quicker on a short dive. God bless.